Problem two. Problem two. Calculate the speed of a proton that is accelerated from rest through an electric potential difference of 120 volts. All right. So again, draw a picture. So you're like, what picture do you draw? Well, the picture I like to draw for these sort of things is whenever you see like electric potential difference or electric field, I always draw a um, parallel plate capacitor. For me, it's just the easiest to visualize and it keeps me from messing things up. Well, at least for the most part. So I draw another plate. Ooh, there we go. Perfectly, perfectly aligned. And we'll do negatives over here. All right. So I'm going to draw my proton, probably red. And this proton is going to be right here. And what's the difference? What's the distance between the two? Well, I'm going to say the distance between these two is 120 volts. So your first thoughts will be like, what? That's not a distance at all. That's a joules per coulomb. It's true, it is. Um, but the distance doesn't matter. All this is saying is that we have a proton that's accelerating from rest through a potential of 120 volts. Um, that 120 volts could be over a distance of a couple inches. It could be over thousands and thousands of miles. Uh, we don't know how quickly this um, proton is being accelerated. All we know is that it is being accelerated. So we want to find the speed that's going when it's done. So what's going to happen to this little guy is he is going to shoot off from this side to that side. Probably actually in a straight line. They don't usually curve like that. All right. So when we have potential energy, or when we have uh, a voltage, which is potential, which I like to call electric potential potential. There's another word, potential energy difference. So it's potential potential energy. It's joules per coulomb. So we have 120 joules per coulomb. We will multiply that by the number of coulombs we have in one proton, which is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 12th. Same as electron, just opposite sign. And then we're going to set that equal. So that's the, that will give us joules. And joules is energy, which will then set equal to kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Terrible, terrible, terrible handwriting. It's like a blind gopher gnawing on a pencil. All right, so I'm going to solve this thing. And every time, anytime you solve this, I got a homework or a test or that sort of thing. I'd usually solve it first in terms of v squared. Um, square roots just look ugly in life, and it's easier to solve for v squared first. So v squared will be uh, the voltage times the charge oh, divided by mass and then times 2. And then we'll square root it, but we'll square root it later. So I say that, but then I put the square root in front. That's okay. Skipping steps. Voltage, what voltage did we say it was? 120? I'm going to say it's 120. 120 times 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. Hmm, OK. Ooh, is there a 2 in there? I need to put the 2. Divided by the mass. So a mass of a proton. What is the mass of a proton? 27? Negative 27? Proton. Proton. So we have a mass of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27. 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th. Let's see what this does. Let's go Wolfram. Oh, that's always reasonable. 1.52 times 10 to the fifth. OK. Implies. That way I can just say, let's go straight to V, 1.52 five times 10 to the fifth. OK. So that's pretty good, because it's um, 10 to the fifth means it's going pretty fast. But you want to start getting skeptical when you start seeing 10 to the seventh, 10 to the eighth. Because if you get something that's flying around at 10 to the ninth meters per second, the world ends. Well, it doesn't actually, but it's. Uh, 
2.99 times 10 to the 8th meters per second is speed of light. And so if you get something faster than that, chances are you did something wrong. And when you start getting close to that, then you have to start worrying about relativistic speeds. And we don't want to we don't want to worry about that in this class. All right, so that's for a proton. And then like, well, okay, well, it's an electron. Well, electron, just as a general rule of thumb, weighs one two thousandth of a proton. So it should be like 50 times less. So, or 50 times faster, because of the whole square root thing. So let's find out what an electron is in life. E electron. Mass, 9.2 times 10 to the negative 31st. I say 9.2, but I'm going to put in 9.1. Wow, what's the mass of a sun? I know that it's similar to something. The sun. Mass. Yep, that's why I remember it. Because electron is 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31st, and sun is times 10 to the 30th. So it's what, like 61, 62? I'll say 60. 60 zeros bigger, which is a lot. All right, so we should get an answer, and this says 6.5 times 10 to the sixth. So scroll down here, do a whole bunch of work. Velocity electron equals 6.1 times 10 to the sixth, which is also small enough. It's fast, but it's small enough that you're not, you're not worried about relativistic speeds, at least not as much. All right, that sounds good. So the key to this guy, draw a picture, understand that voltage is potential energy. So when you multiply it, the voltage, i.e. the joules per coulomb by coulomb, you get energy, and then you just physics one on it. And use the 1 half mv squared, and you get your speed. Sounds good? All right. See you on number three.